Thank you. We keep moving forward, opening new doors, and doing new things. Because we are curious, and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. Good morning to one and all present here. We are gathered here for the wonderful occasion for the one-day national level online workshop on implementation of outcome-based education. In Commerce Education, organized by BCom Business Analytics of G. Venkatasamin Aydu College, Kovilpetti. Leadership is not a position for title. It is an action and example. He is the living example for this course. I would like to welcome our director, sir, Dr. G. Venkat Salabadi, sir, to deliver the presentation address. Good morning, respected principal, honorable secretary, organizing secretary, and the most valuable resource person, staff members, and participants from various colleges. Thank you one and all for having given me the opportunity to speak in this occasion. Today, the higher education scenario has completely changed. The government of India is seriously thinking about improving the standards of education, especially in higher educational institutions. Our college has also taken a nice step toward achieving this. So we were the first to introduce OBE syllabus especially in the whole of uh, Manormaniam Sundara University. And really, the students are supposed to be the biggest beneficiary of this outcome-based education. In today's education world, the students are actually, uh, they call it as educated illiterates, because even after completing a degree, they are not able to say anything about the subject. They are not able to even utter a few words in English. So that is the pathetic situation as far the higher education is concerned. And I hope the students in future will be able to equip themselves well so that they can play a very meaningful role in industry. And also as far the commerce students are concerned, there is high competition. Lakhs and lakhs of students are every year coming out of the college. So they need to be properly equipped to face such a situation. So I hope that the department has taken a right uh, decision by organizing a seminar like this that will be highly beneficial to all the stakeholders. And particularly, I very much appreciate Dr. Muthalachimi, Madam, for having taken all the steps to get sponsorship for this great event. I wish this event a great success. And I also thank the secretary and principal and other staff members for having given me the opportunity to speak few words in this great occasion. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, sir. Extend your arms in. Welcome to a future the best aid to come. I like this quote. I would like to welcome Ms. Ms. Nani. Second, we can be to come back. Good morning to each one of you present here. It is a moment of extreme pleasure to welcome the guests who are present here to attend this online national level workshop. On behalf of our college, BCom Business Analytics Department, I offer my regards to all the experts and the faculties joining us. I welcome our college secretary, Dr. P. Magendran Sir, our principal, Dr. N. R. Shanti Mageshwari, ma'am, and our director, Sir, Dr. G. Venkala Salapati, for presiding over this function. I convey my regards to the resource person of the day. Dr. S. T. Silva Sundari, Assistant Professor of English, G. Venkatasamy Nairu College, Kovil Petty. Dr. K. J. Sanmistra, Assistant Professor of Commerce, the Standard Firework, Rajaratnam College for Women, Sivagasi. And Dr. C. Muthulakshmi, Head and Assistant Professor of Commerce, PCOM Business Analytics, G. Venkatasamy Nairu College, Kovil Petty. Thank you so much, ma'am, for accepting our invitation to share your knowledge with us. I bid a very warm welcome to all the faculty members who took out their valuable time and joined us today to be a part of this workshop. We are honored to have you all with us. I would like to offer my record to Dr. S. Shagira Banu, Assistant Professor, BCom Business Analytics, for coordinating this program in a successful manner. I wish this program will be productive and worth your precious time. Thank you, one and all. So you learn to give and get criticism. I would like to invite Dr. C. Muthulakshmi, convener of our workshop, to present the theme of the workshop. Good morning, one and all. I am Dr. C. Muthulakshmi. I invite all the participants to join with us. Uh, I am going to present the theme of the workshop. Commerce education is a field of education that focuses on developing the necessary information abilities and attitudes for dealing with trade, commerce and industry. Graduates must have a wide range of abilities such as problem solving, efficient communication and the capacity to swiftly adapt to new technologies in order to keep up with this rapid technological advancement. Traditional classroom teaching strategies will not be able to teach these abilities. As a result, a successful education system must be built to suit these needs. Thus, to overcome these requirements, it is mandatory to shift from traditional education system to outcome-based education, OBE, which includes various learning outcomes. Outcome-based education or outcome-based OBE is an educational theory that bases each part of an education system around the goals and outcomes. By the end of the educational experience, each student should have achieved the goal. There is no single specific skill of teaching or assessment in OBE. Instead, classes, opportunities, and assessments should all help the student to achieve the specified outcomes. The role of the faculty adapts into instructor, trainer, facilitator, or mentor based on the outcomes targeted. In outcome-based education, lecturers yeah, serve like as knowledge facilitators for the students. The success of OBE depends mostly on the active participation of the students in the learning process. In order to inculcate the OBE concepts and its implementation methodology in the minds of the teaching faculty members in the commerce and management system, we are taking efforts being associated with ICSSR, SRC, Hyderabad, organizing this workshop entitled Implementation of Outcome-Based Education in Commerce Education. I strongly believe that the following sessions will enhance the knowledge of the teaching faculty members towards the implementation of OBE in commerce education. The following are the three sessions handed over by the three resource persons. The first, first session, session will be handed by Dr. S.D. Silva Sudari, Madam, Assistant Professor of English, come, uh, uh, convener of the OBE cell, G. Venkatasamy College, Autonomous Kovilpati, entitled 
introduction to outcome based education the second session will be handled by dr kg sanmista madam assistant professor of commerce the standard fair of sarjet no college for women academic sarkasi entitled implementation of obe in commerce education finally the third session will be handled by myself dr c mukeshmi head and assistant professor of commerce business analytics g vengasamy naidu college autonomous school petty i hope all the three sessions will be more productive and useful for you we are very happy to invite you all for joining with us thank you once again thank you ma'am to be inspired is great but to be an inspiration is an honor i would like to invite dr s shagira banu to introduce our resource person it is a it is a pleasure to welcome such a noble personality as our chief guest first session handled by dr s d selv sundri assistant professor of english g vengadasamy naidu college autonomous kovilpatti she worked teaching experience in 10 years she attended in seminar conference workshop and webinar in 27 she workshop organized by bec and state level program at national engineering college she national and international published in 14 papers so on behalf of on one and all person here please welcome ma'am thank you ma'am every thought you produce anything you say any action you do it be as your signature to prove these words i would like to invite our resource person for session 1 Dr S D Selvasundari convener of OBE monitoring cell and assistant professor of english G Venkatesamy Naidu College Autonomous Kovilpetti to hand over the session 1 Good morning all am i audible Yes, ma'am. Respected, yes, ma'am. You are audible. Yeah, okay. Thank yes, ma'am. You. you are audible. Thank you. Yes, Respected ma Dr. P. Mahendran, Secretary Sir, Honorable Principal Madam, Dr. N. R. Santi Mageshwari, our most beloved Director, Dr. G. Vengada Chalabadi Sir. Mm -hmm. I am pleased to be a part of this forum. First of all, I would like to extend my thanks and regards for all my higher officials and convener, Dr. C. Muthalakshmi, head of the Department of Business. become business analytics who had given me this wonderful opportunity and i am really pleased to be in this forum and uh, normally we this uh, particular seminar is about outcome based education outcome based education first framed by an american academician and psychologist william spady who coined the term outcome based education in 1988 so he can be called as the father of outcome based education outcome based education is a theory which focuses on measuring the student's performance so normally education education is very much needed for each and every individual in the society because it lays the foundation of learning knowledge for every individual person so whoever having some knowledge can act confidently in the society so education progresses personal lives helps the society to run effectively so uh, there is a divorce difference between illiterate Hello, and literate yes is there any need there your phone no what do your phone there sir because hai ye baat kal mein Okay. So let's go on with move on with the traditional educational system. Okay. Education 
the we are we have the traditional way of education normally is teacher centric for all the others is it audible to you all yes ma'am you are audible okay thank you so traditional is we have to find the difference between traditional education and outcome based education so traditional is teacher centric normally if a teacher is very much knowledgeable and the effectiveness of the education will be passed on very smoothly and very efficiently normally we used to say i studied mathematics to in this uh, with this particular teacher and i am now i am really good in mathematics and this particular teacher taught me english so i am very fluent in english so we used to give the credit to the teachers because the traditional education was teacher centric and this outcome based education is learner centric so normally if a teacher is efficient he can uh, just pass on his knowledge to the students and that will make him efficient and if the teacher is not that much educated not that much influential or that much knowledgeable so um, it it will be going in the negative direction so if uh, so learner centric means every individual will have the responsibility of learning he is the one who is responsibility for his future so this outcome based education is purely learner centric so the role of what is the role of the teacher the role of the teacher is just a facilitator trainer mentor or a guide okay so they will just give us information they will motivate us they will regularly monitor us in outcome based education and this emphasis is what is learned not what is taught okay so what the individual has learned that is the main base of outcome based education so normally in this um, competitive uh, world it, all the individuals are expected to be knowledgeable and skillful and uh, the expectation is t shaped skill that is the t it will have a perpendicular line as well as a um, horizontal line the perpendicular line indicates the deep knowledge or depth of the knowledge the subject whatever subject we study it should be we should be skillful enough to uh, in that field okay so we should have a deep knowledge and we should be expertise in our own subject and the horizontal bar uh, represents the other disciplinary actions that is the it comprises the ability to collaborate across all the disciplines and apply the knowledge in parallel areas of entertainment expertise that is it it can be uh, taught as the multidisciplinary area wherever we go we need to have some coordination with everyone so we should have skill as well as we should have we should embrace all the other field also so that is the demand of t shaped skills and this ove is currently considered to be a most valuable way of education because it is accepted by the international forums and it is give it is one of the criteria for giving accreditation for the higher educational institution that is first we have washington accord it is an international agreement between the bodies that is they concentrated on the valuable learning in engineering subject first and india became one of the statutory member permanent member of washington accord in 2014 then after that our university grant commission they adopted they insisted all the edu higher educational institutions to be in the to uh, follow outcome based education for the for getting accreditation so now most of the higher education go for nac and nba accreditations and for that purpose obe is very much needed so this is the right forum to get to know about outcome based education so first we should know what are the benefits the benefit of the outcome based education is it brings clarity among the students and the teacher so normally there are times when a student used to go out of the institution without any particular knowledge also that's why right. they couldn't meet the expectations of the company or corporates or the workplace and 
we we don't even double give them double. one way of learning but we used to give them more double. number of learning methods why double so that is teachers are not um, they are they don't make students to restrict with one type of learning normally in the previous types of education Four, students seven, are only be the running. listeners and here students used to take yeah, active yeah. participation and yeah, it reduces Four, the comparison among the students as seven, everyone eight, has a different target okay so i because each individual is different each individual have their own skills and their own capacity of learning we can't make them as a group we can't give the same type of assessment for every team or every individual so we should know their level we should know the capacity of the students and we have to give the assessment accordingly because the learning methodology varies some people will learn with just reading itself some people will learn by listening to the teacher's words some people will listen and they will just uh, listen by uh, read or acquire knowledge by visuals some people like to get knowledge through practical so there are so many types of learners so obe give and feeds all the learners and in this learn uh, the the completely it involves completely the student should be the responsible person the student should involve in the learning process and it is uh, it is the uh, responsibility of the students to learn everything and teachers will guide them in each and every step and we can go with the structure of the ob that is normally you know in the traditional uh, way of uh, education normally there will be a syllabus frame students will study that they will get graduated they will go outside to the society but uh, here madam sorry to interrupt you yes yes ma'am uh, mr abu salik sir and shahira banu madam if you unmute yourself it will be great to us okay yeah, yeah i'll tell the coordinator thank you madam thank you madam okay. okay. நார்மலி Uh, that is after graduation after graduation a student is expected to have some outcomes okay those outs those outcomes are the attributes taken away from the institution so in the the student the outcomes are formulated first that is the vision mission program outcome program educational objectives program specific objectives co- program outcomes and course outcomes these are all framed first that is if you want to go as a successful person the student should have the um, these capacities that is the student should be knowledgeable the student should be skillful and the student should have good attitude so first we have to frame the outcomes then the that is to get that outcome what are the contents he need so what the student want to learn to achieve that outcome first outcomes are framed excuse me structure of the uh, report go to the previous yes in this competitive world the school student is expected to come with certain outcomes so outcomes are first framed what are the expected outcomes are first framed then the the content that is the content that is to get this outcome what content the students has to uh, read or to learn that should be framed first outcomes are framed based on that outcomes content is framed and the curriculum is structured according to the expectation of the society or company then the role of the teacher is fixed that is how they are going to deliver the content now it is not only lecture but it can also be conducting group discussion conducting quiz sessions and conducting other practical methods so that can be called as the content delivery methods then 
the suitable content delivery methods are followed and they the, the role of the teacher is to encourage them towards learning and so so you have given the, you have framed the outcome you have framed the syllabus and curriculum and you are delivering the content how will you assess and check whether the student has acquired the knowledge that is assessment okay so you should have some authentic assessment tools so assessment tools normally uh, in the previous uh, um, traditional way of education we have the exam or some uh, end semester examination we will have that may be the summative assessment but now we have to follow the formative assessment formative type of assessment that is now and then regularly at least weekly once we have to assess the student it need not be the exam it can be just a quiz or a surprise test or a small class test or a practical method or we can make them to have, do a seminar or we can just ask them to sit together and have a group discussion about the particular topic so the student they themselves will prepare and they will collect material because they are they will be assessed at any time so every day whenever the students come to the class they used to come prepared and they will be ready to get the assessment okay so then so this assessment will be done and normally internal test and external test will also be there to assess the knowledge level and practical exams will be conducted to assess the skill level and the other uh, group discussion seminars and other classroom activity will be done to assess the uh, attitude and the behavioral context of the students so then after assessing we need to measure because our main aim is to get the outcome so we it is we are in a time to find whether the students have attained that outcome okay so now we have the marks with us we have assessed each and every individuals and we have the marks with us so these marks are entered and we have to fix a target as per the level of the students and by that target we can take that as a threshold and we have to fix the target and we have to find whether how many students are above the target and how many students are below the target so by that we can calculate the attainment so all course outcome vision mission program outcome everything should be measurable so we have we have given them the content we have first framed the outcome yeah. statements we have given them the content and we have delivered them in different ways we assessed them in more different ways we have entered the marks and we have calculated the attainments so all these things finally shows whether we have attained the target or not so that outcome based is purely meant measuring the ability skill and attitude of the students and outcome based education has given us the 12 expectations from the graduates they are called graduate attributes graduate attributes that is they are high level qualities and these qualities can are expected in each and every individuals okay and uh, these qualities especially the knowledge first the student should be knowledgeable in the subject because various student will be in various disciplines they may be studying in various programs and but they should be having an in depth knowledge in whatever subject they have and the next one is they should have the problem analysis power that is they have to study if they have in depth knowledge they can analyze they can they can just reduce any problem or they they can eradicate any problem and they can analyze it and they can give a solution for it and likewise they should have the team individual and team work capacity that is a student may be good and student may be proficient and student may be competent but if he or she is flexible enough if he or she is adaptable only then that knowledge is uh, knowledge can be fulfilled that is he should have the co coordinating capacity and he should have the capacity to be flexible to be adaptable and to be work successfully in as an individual as and as well as in a team so he should be good as a team player 
so that combines all the attitude behavior skill and knowledge and communication skill normally communication is very much important and as a from the department of english i want to say that i want to stress that point because communication is the base for everything you may be knowledgeable you may be good you may be skillful but you have to uh, show that to other people that is you have to exhibit that so for that purpose the language is very much important especially communication skill is very much important some people if they are they want to represent from some if they want to represent any point they used to go and they used to have a chat or talk with somebody else but when the, that particular person just disagree with your point they if you are convinced you don't have the con- communication skill so because you are never get a chance to express what you want to tell okay so if you want to tell if you want to stress something you should have the power you should have the persuasive skill also only then the follower or the listener will accept whatever you have okay so we should we need to stress of a point if you feel that is correct or if you feel the opponent point is correct you can surrender you can give your surrender or you can accept their point and come away okay so communication skill is very much needed and professionalism and tools lifelong learning and lifelong learning is also another important criteria in a for an educated person because if you become stagnant or if you stop learning you will become outdated even though even if you are a teacher or if you are a learner or if you are any professional you need to update till the latest trendy things and updation is the one which makes you vibrant always which makes you active always and which makes others people to believe you because you will be knowledgeable so normally uh, elder people they used to say in our days in our good old days in those days that uh, phrases are outdated now because people doesn't want to do hard work they want to do smart work so the younger generation if you are in the teaching position the younger generation will like you only if you are updated they will believe you only you are updated because you will be the good facilitator and you will be the good guide for them and they don't want to uh, go for any other resource because you are a um, life lively resource just before them okay so lifelong learning should be very much important and you should have a basic basic ethics and you have to consider everyone equal equal and you should do your you should be good in uh, finance management and project management and you should have a very good impact in the society so these are the 12 attributes expected from a graduate and it is our duty as teachers that we have to make our students to be updated to have a lifelong th- learning thirst and they should be good in their profession they should be a team player they should have the problem solving capacity they should be a good communicator and thus they should be a confident and skillful and successful individual in the society so <laughs> these things these things are achieved only by outcome based education because it is completely learner centric and normally the learning outcomes how you have to frame the outcomes so we have okay. so outcome based education is especially the give much important in framing outcomes the outcomes whenever you are trying to frame any outcomes it should have the it should have the um, concentrate should be how to concentrate on knowledge skill and attitude and attitude especially 70% of knowledge should be there and 30% of skill and attitude component should be there and outcome based education is an organized structure and we have to make proficient we have to make students in uh, in such a way that we are the first one the cognitive yes so normally the domains of ob that is these the, the three can be called as the domain of ob that is cognitive psychomotor and affective so the cognitive means it is knowledge that is the subject um, expert or subject knowledge and psychomotor skills are m- moving by body parts that is practicals and the affective domain is our attitude ethics and basic manners 
so we can call it as head hand and heart also cognitive for head that is all knowledge and psychomotor for hand that is what we do with our body parts and heart the last one should be the behavioral affective domain okay so these three are the main domains of obe and normally the uh, psychomotor is very much important here because all the students doesn't like to read and read and read again and again and they want to do something practical so their hand coordination hand and eye coordination especially in my uh, class i used to say work indi individually normally if we are entering any results in an uh, excel sheet or if you are any entering any marks in an excel sheet i have seen so many teachers and students one will be just reading the other will be just typing the numbers but i especially make them to do it individually because only then you will have the hand and eye coordination otherwise you will miss that hand and eye coordination even when you are a kid normally some mothers will help the kid they will read and the son or daughter will write the homework so i really request everyone not to do that because every individual should see and they have to write they their eyes should work and their hand hand should act accordingly so the only then the hand and the eye coordination will develop will develop that will be very much important for the practical way of learning so whatever you learn learn individually whatever work you do do it individually and become a confident and skillful student okay and uh, when we are going for outcome based course content you should have all the skill knowledge and this behavioral context and assessment we have direct and indirect assessment then direct assessment can be achieved by the outcomes and objectives it focuses on the student performance that is the student may be in various levels so outcomes can also be in different level we have to form we have to follow the formative assessment and not the summative assessment and we have to follow the performance assessment also that is you have to frame some rubrics for example rubrics are the methodologies that is there are the criteria there are the various parameters used to assess an individual in a practical manner or in a skillful manner okay so you have to frame some rubrics that is if the students is not good in content you can you can start in a very poor condition then if someone some student is good and in content but can't deliver well means we can go to the next criteria then the excellent people will go and they will be having the good they can be they can perform excellent way so we can have various parameters like is not uh, poor not satisfied satisfied good and excellent these are the rubrics so for that what is good and what is excellent you have to give a difference by framing rubrics and we have to assess the um, students uh, knowledge in as per the bloom's taxonomy for example bloom's taxonomy is the uh, level of learning it is uh, we have six levels of learning and these six levels of learning are done according to the postulates of dr bloom and we have remember understand is i think you can go for the next uh, one we have six levels of thinking and learning that is the first one the first the basic one is remembering then understand apply analyze evaluate and then create so remembering is the uh the low, in the lowest level the first level of learning that is whenever you can see the kids whenever they go somewhere they will ask what is this why is this why it is flying what is this so they want to get and remember and understand okay so the basic level first normally all the statements all laws all basic principle all basic concept name of the persons everything comes under remember if we remember the subject content only then we will try to understand what it is okay so first stage of learning is remembering then understanding then apply so if you remember and understand you will apply 
and you will you will apply that knowledge and you will try to analyze what is good and what is not good and after analyzing you will be evaluating them evaluating with a bigger context and the final one will be the creation normally among all degrees phd is considered to be the biggest degree and the utmost highest degree because the everyone is creating their own brain babies that is brain child we used to submit our thesis and because it is our own creation we have formulated we have some finding we have some results so uh, that is the utmost type and if whenever there are many literature in in some era that era is called as a creative time okay so when our mind is free we can create a lot so creation is the utmost way of knowledge so first so the questions when you are setting a question you should have all these uh, six parameters all these six levels in your question we need to concentrate on people who are some some slow learners will be also there some average learners will be there and some high and advanced learners will be there so accordingly we have to set the question we have to feed some question for the slow learners also because they can only remember and understand they can't apply so but the medium level students they can apply and they can analyze okay so normally the higher educations when you go for research and higher education they give you questions on evaluation and create also okay so make sure that your question paper consists all types of this bloom's level and program outcomes or the abilities attained by the student at the time of graduation so we are putting this much effort to make a student after graduation to achieve his goals and then uh, see uh, the first attainment level uh, uh, all the co co's are calculated and that is consolidated and that is uh, measured with the program outcome and every discipline every that means every department will have its own program outcome and we have to measure that program outcome that is from this department how many students have gone out successfully that should be the measurement that is the attainment so by that attainment we can measure the vision of the college also in course of time that is at least five, five to six hours years after after this we have to get the information about the alumni of the college and then only we can go for the final attainment so the impact of ob is very much needed in the current trend and the it is the emphasis is placed clear in the students expectations student achievements and we have to enhance our curriculum with the help of outcome based education because it prepares the student with the knowledge skill and attitude which definitely will make every individual to face this society with confidence and with success and uh, thank you if you have any questions you can ask me thank you all thank you ma'am thank you anybody can make a history only a great man can write it to prove these words i would like to invite our resource person for session 2 dr k j sanmista assistant professor of commerce the standard firework rajaratnam college for women autonomous sivagasi so to hand at the session 2 Good morning and warm greetings to all. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Lakshmi, ma'am, uh, kindly share the PowerPoint.
but otherwise give me the rights to share my screen it has been disabled Is the screen visible? Not yet, ma'am. Okay. I'm Dr. K J Shanmukta, Assistant Professor of Commerce from the Standard Fire of Rajgadhnam College for Women, Kolkata. I'm very pleased to be the speaker of today's session, Implementation of OBE in Commerce Education. Let me start my presentation. with a quote the illiterates of the 21st century would not be those who haven't gone to school but they will be those who have stopped learning and real learning So learning is a continuous process. So with this quote of Alvin Toffler, let me start my presentation. Introduction to commerce education. As a preview. commerce education is a business education it is that area of education which develops the required knowledge skills and attitudes for handling the trade commerce and industry now these three elements knowledge skills and attitudes are shortly termed as ksa The commerce education plays an essential role in today's dynamic business environment. Business environment is subject to several changes due to globalization, due to technological changes. It is a high tech job to survive in this competitive world in any kind of career or doing any kind of business. So, commerce education should be very much powerful. due to increasingly complex nature of organization and the businesses the business schools that is we have to impart relevant current and cutting edge knowledge to our students the school of commerce should play a prime vital role in equipping our future dynamic managers with the emerging trends of commerce skills to face the challenges of the dynamic business world the importance of commerce education has been pre uh, presented in this slide commerce is a promising subject anyhow we are promising a career or we are promising some self employment opportunities for our students so it is very important for the learners to learn it fully and successfully it equips the students with a general as well as a specialized knowledge on all the economic activities which will help them to learn to live it gives info information relevant to developing their management skills problem solving skills hrm skills and skills to manage their time it helps even in the decision making process in the ever dynamic environment it helps for the holistic development of the personality of the students we are teaching them the analytical skills we are giving them the creative thinking and we are making them to realize the ethical values to be uh, followed in their business everything is being provided to them to develop all round the development of the students that's
next slide, please. Let us go back our memories on how the commerce education has spread in India. Commerce education was started in India in the year 1886 in a commercial institute at Chennai. During the initial years, commerce education had limited objectives only. That's of providing clerical and accounting personnel with emphasis on training in typewriting, shorthand, letter writing, and business methods. Then in the year 1895, the School of Commerce was started in Calicut, which was followed by the Presidency College was started at Kolkata in the year 1903. Between 1903 and 1912, commerce institutions were also established in the like Delhi and Mumbai. The branch of education had been stupendous growth in the country only after independence. So we have to thank the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, the Institute of Cast and Works Accountants of India, and the Institute of Company Secretaries of India, which have gained more value for the commerce education in India. Commerce education is totally different from other disciplines as it creates new rules to develop tomorrow's administrators, leaders, managers, and professionals. Commerce offers foundation for many professional careers like finance, planning, accountancy, tax practicing, uh, banking and broking, etc. Besides academics, research and many more. The technological revolution has also provided new dimensions to the commerce education like e-banking, e-finance, e-marketing, e-commerce, e-investment, e-trade and many more. What, is, what has brought the need for revitalizing our commerce education? The first line is pinpointing as one. It is a well accepted truth. The majority of us is through theoretical classroom teaching. We are creating the employees and not the employers. So we have to give them the practical exposure to make them to start their own businesses. They should not be the job hunters. They should be the job providers. By keeping it in mind, the commerce education should concentrate more on practical classes. Further, we do not provide the knowledge and skill to the students adequate knowledge and skill to the students, which will give them job posture as our syllabus mismatch for the industrial requirement. This has resulted in large number of commerce graduates remaining unemployed or underemployed. This phenomenon has now been recognized by the academicians like us, administrators like our college management, UGC and all, policy makers and hence there is a strong greater trust on revitalizing. The major objectives behind this revitalization process may be enhancing individual employability, strengthening competitiveness, creating opportunities to acquire skills throughout the life, develop high quality skilled workforce or entrepreneurs relevant to the current and emerging employment market needs. Formal and informal apprenticeship and other training should be provided. Practical training should be provided for self-employment and entrepreneurial development. With these objectives, there is a strong need for revitalizing commerce education. More than that, there are few more challenges which are quite uh, astonishing for us to realize how much it is important to change our commerce education. In the year 2018, the Ministry of Education had cancelled 416 majors and in the year 2014, 66 specialities were cancelled which increased six times in just five years. So from the current trend, there may be more majors that is the discipline 
facing the fate of integration, optimization, cutting and cancellation in the future. Traditional commerce education has become irrelevant in the modern era of globalization and digitalization. This we have to accept. So there is an urgent need to modify its structure in order to cope up with the dynamic environment of businesses today. To keep pace with the growing complexities, the need of the art is to ensure that appropriate change must occur in commerce education so that the students opting for it will find a place for themselves in the job market. Ask the question to yourself. We have to ask the question to ourselves. Does commerce education offer good employability skills and talent? Hence, the severe criticism on commerce education is that it's widening mismatch between the demands of the industry and the education system. This slide is quite interesting. What the employers are looking from our fresh managers that we are sending to the market. They expect 67 percentage communication skills from the students. 48 percentage, they must do problem solving and do critical analysis. They have to motivate others. They have to manage the projects effectively. They have, they should have the ability to work across different cultures. They should possess financial skills, digital literacy, ability to reflect the self-awareness and the ability to have difficult competitions. So whether these skills are developed by our commerce education, that's question we have to ask to ourselves while designing our curriculum. What, what, what shall we do? Measures to overcome the challenges. High priority should be given on developing a proper board for drafting the syllabus. Making regular changes as per the need of the industry and global market. Making English the compulsory medium of instruction. Case studies should be included in our curriculum. We have to give practical time. During the education period, we have to give them exposure to the real industrial problems and solutions. We have to give them the exposure to successful corporate strategies and the reasons for failures of such corporate. We have to give them the exposure and analysis of successful global strategies. Whether these are possible. EAA is giving them student centered education. I am taking class 90. I am teaching them well. This should not be the concept anymore. Our process, teaching learning process should be student centric. We have to develop new attitudes and new skills among our students. The method of teaching through lectures will have to be replaced by other methods. We have to stress on self-study, case study and the other dynamic sessions of seminars and workshops with industry experts, alumni and others. The teachers must develop our own academic personality. Then only we can influence the personality of the students. We have to upgrade ourselves continuously through solving real life problems by applying the knowledge gained through the classroom teaching. So, uh, be honest to my question, many of us may be teaching income tax. Many of us may be teaching computerized accounting. 
ask the question to yourself are you filing your income tax returns as a self assessor or are you relying on any chartered accountant for filing your it returns this question is asked to yourself we will be knowing the fact that placement or self employment is the ultimate goal of any business institution within the plan we cannot build the tomorrow's plan Out of this dedication, it is a systematic process to overcome all the challenges we have created. Yeah. So we have to set some professional standards when we are entering into the outcome-based dedication. All the colleges will look at us. UGC will give us some professional standards. We we'll get the certification as our curriculum is entering into OBB. And this learner learner centric system will fill the gap. Quality of students. Our students may be good in their knowledge level, but at the skill based learning, some sort of lagging may be there. But knowledge, skill, and attitude, if these three are developing, that will develop the quality of the student. That gap will be filled by this OBE. student guidance from theoretical learning to practical or exper experimental learning experiential learning we are guiding them we can track their academic records continuously what course outcome they have achieved they have not attained that the tracking will be done rather than whether they have passed that subject or failed in that subject credit recognition in the choice based credit uh, system what how they are uh, going for interdisciplinary that recognition can also be given in this learner centric education and it also fills the gap between the curriculum and the teaching staff it helps us to give holistic development for the students we can give them research orientation we, we can make them think creatively and do innovative projects we can make them to be involved in the continuous learning activities we can create our classroom and enthusiastic place of learning we can create social values as well as ethical values inside the class this is a, a picture this is my for content obe is a continuous improvement process is a continuous improvement process say something and do what you say this is a mantra behind the continuous improvement program you say anything i do this i do that like that you say anything but do what you say prove it and improve it this is the continuous improvement program obe this uh the previous census person has elaborated it very nicely student learning outcome program it should match with the course content the course content should be delivered to the students through proper teaching learning strategies and the student should enthusiastically with their full involvement do many kind of third year boys to tamil department ko tamil school starting kamesh sir ma'am alla irukanga third year boys kindly unmute yourself students learning activities should be assessed and Uh, adequate feedback must be collected from the students as and when required so that should be helpful in the training of next level learning outcome for the students this continuous it is a continuous process it revolves around them. next slide how to start with obe in a common education it is simply the restructuring of curriculum assessment as well as the reporting practices start from your syllabus and it should end in the continuous reporting process 
modify your existing curricula, revise the course content. We have to introduce innovative delivery methods or teaching methodologies. Introduce innovative assessment tools. And we have to be very strong in our data collection process. And we have to involve in continuous quality improvement. Once in two years, the board of study thinking should be conducted. And we have to have good tie-up with the industrial environment so that our curriculum will be updated. Here's the wonderful concept OBE Pramit. There are five P's in OBE. First one is the paradigm, purposes, premises, principles, and practices. Paradigm what and whether students can learn successfully is more important than when and how they learn something. The purposes. Equip the students with knowledge, competencies, and qualities. Build structures and operate schools so that the desired outcome is achieved by maximum number of students. The premises, that is the planning assumptions are, all the students can learn. We should not uh, have any discrimination within the classroom. A student who may be lesser in knowledge may be higher in skills very higher in value. So, uh, our planning assumption should be that all the students can learn, but not in the same time or in the same way. Some, somebody may be learning in a shorter duration of time and somebody may be taking more time. For the first time telling itself, some students may be learning, while telling it repeatedly, some will learn, but all can learn. Successful learning breeds more successful learning. Schools control the conditions that direct learning. The important principles in OBE are the clarity of focus, the expanded opportunities, high expectations, fix your target to the greater extent, designing down from culminating outcomes. The practices are define your learning outcome, design curriculum, Delivering instruction or strategy should be formulated. Document results determine the advancement. In five or the effective practices of ABC. Yes, here comes the routine thing. From the graduate attributes, we have to roll on. From the vision and mission of the institution, formulate the program educational objectives of your department. Then the program outcome of that particular program, whether it is a UG commerce program or a PG commerce program or an MP commerce program. Design your program outcome. For each course, the course outcomes should be formulated and they should be mapped together. And this structure is the OBE framework. That's the slide. The graduate attributes are this one, Sarah Sundari ma'am has elaborated in a nice manner. These are the graduate attributes which are suggested by NPA as well as the UGC. From this, we have to uh, grab what are all the program educational objectives, what qualities our students should possess. From that, we have to uh, formulate our PE work as well as our PEs. Program Educational Objectives, shortly PEOs, is what the program is preparing graduates for in their career and the professional life. It should be based on the graduate attributes. It addresses the graduate's attainment within three to five years, not immediately after completing their education. This can be attained only after their education Within a period of three to five years, we can uh, get the data of where our students are, what our alumni are doing after their graduation. The PEOs for specific domain experts are defined with input from alumni, stakeholders, parents, and employers survey, giving importance to the institute's vision and mission. 
PEO attainment is quantified by assessing the different surveys conducted from the alumni, stakeholders, employees, and the graduate entrepreneurs. Next level is the program outcomes, which consists of the ability is to be attained by the students before they graduate, which are formulated based on our PEOs. The program outcomes addresses the knowledge, skills, and attitudes to be attained by the students. It is assessable based on the direct attainment as well as the indirect attainment of course outcomes, which are mapped with the program outcomes. Next slide. The final one is the course outcomes. These are the statements of knowledge, skills and abilities that students are expected to know and understand and perform as a result from their learning experience in each course. A well-written CO facilitates lecturers in measuring the achievement of the CO at the end of the semester. It also helps us in designing the suitable delivery and assessment method to achieve the designed course outcome. There are five essential qualities for the course outcomes. One, it should be specific, it should be measurable, it should be achievable, it should be realistic, and it should be time-bound. Within the completion of the course, we have to measure it. So it should be time bound. By keeping these five in mind, we have to formulate our course outcomes. Next. What are the benefits that we can derive out of this learning outcomes or course outcomes? First one is the outcome driven method focuses on achieving the end results well-planned and documented actions for ease of operations. These are the aim broken down into goals, ensuring corrective measures. It maximizes relevant knowledge, values, and skill sets. It encourages the learners to contribute towards making a better society. It enhances analyzing the power and the logical thinking of the learners. It emphasizes on innovation and enables the learner to be a lifelong learner. It ensures futuristic skill sets and job readiness of the learners. Next slide. The course outcomes can be uh, measured by way of every question of every assessment component or to be mapped with any one of the course outcomes. And these course outcomes are mapped to the program outcomes. Program articulation matrix, that is FAM, and weighted FAM are to be derived, and which will assist in the evaluation of attainment of the program outcomes. The attainment of the CO and PO can be quantified simply by using MS Excel program, or we can customize our own software program for our input. How to do this mapping of course outcomes and program outcomes? Mapping means creating a link between the course outcomes and program outcomes. Program outcomes, uh, it may differ from institution to institution based on the graduate attributes. You can design your own program outcomes. It should be mapped with the course outcomes. It need not be mapped with one course outcome, need not be linked with all the program outcomes, if the relevant one, it should be mapped. The weightages are, as per the NBA guidelines for engineering colleges, for high level, the weightage given is 3. For medium level of linkage, the weightage is 2. And for lower level, it is 1. And the guidelines given by UGC suggested that for our arts college and for commerce education, it is 9, 3 and 1. This particular course outcome has a high level of impact on the program outcome. We can view the weightage as 9. The total weightage will be taken to the FAM table and the weighted percentage can be used for finding out how much this particular course is uh, contributing for the program outcome. Will give you the uh, 
pictorial representation of the force outcomes are mapped with the program outcomes. The program outcomes are linked with the program educational objectives. Through our internal uh, test, uh, quizzes, assignments, project work, model exam, and everything, we are measuring the course outcomes which are mapped with the program outcomes. So, by measuring the course outcomes and the contribution of each course outcome on the program outcome, we can get the knowledge on how much the program outcome has been attained. Okay. Other than that, based on the graduate exit survey, the program educational objectives can be uh, measured. Next slide. Then what's the role of Bloom's taxonomy? That also Selva Pillary ma'am has explained in a very uh, excellent manner. Here I have given it in a form of uh, Bloom's taxonomy is moving in this angle one. Before you can understand your concept, you must remember it. Once you remember it, you can understand it. To apply a concept, you must first understand what is there means. Only then only you can apply it. In order to evaluate the process, you must have analyzed it. To create an accurate conclusion, you must have completed a thorough evaluation. So these are the levels in Bloom's taxonomy. Remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, finish. Next. Some tips for effective CO training. The number of course outcomes. For each course, each subject, minimum five course outcomes will be formulated. In each course outcome, there should be a measurable depth. That is it by this concept. It should, the five CEOs should cover the entire course content. We may be having a severe doubt that for five unit course, whether one CO is assigned for one unit that is totally wrong. That is totally wrong. The all the five units should be condensed. The CO is meant for the remembering level. Only the knowledge of the student should be captured. The CO should be like that only. The student will be able to get. Line. They'll be able to summarize. They'll be able to narrate. Like that was the support item for We have to assist the teacher to cover the entire course content and the examiner to set the question C over. The C over that should not be a compound sentence and a complex sentence. Compound sentence means by uh, linking words like under, we can view more number of keywords in one sentence. That should not be done. Okay? And it should not be a complex sentence giving both application level and analyzing level in one sentence. That should not be done. Remember, it projects the quality of the course teacher. If we are academically proficient, if we understand the course content to the full extent, the five CEOs framed by us should reflect each and every question, each and every line in our syllabus. Next. I'm not very much proficient in the formulating the keyword. And here, the sample I have given. For the paper, principles of management, usually these are the five units, first unit is introduction, planning, organizing, starting and directing, and finally controlling. This is a five units paper. Three to the, three to the course outcomes. The first one is at the K2 level. The students will be able to explain the concept, theory, principles of all functional areas of management. The functional areas of management are again planning, organizing, starting, directing, and controlling. All the concepts, theories, and principles can be explained by them after the completion of this course. 
So this is the understanding level. Second CO is also at the K2 level. The students will be able to describe the characteristics, significance, and the essentials of all the functions in the management process. Third one, at the application level, they can apply the procedures, they can apply the processes, they can apply the practices in handling the management functions. After learning this, they can plan, they can organize, they can recruit, they can uh, conduct interviews, they can direct their subordinates like that. They can uh, apply the procedures what they have learned in the real time. Fourth one, at the analyze level, the student will be able to analyze the utility of various techniques in managing the various resources of the organization. K5 level, they can evaluate the barriers, uh, barriers in the management process to suggest relevant measures for effective management. So, like this, the course outcome will prove the quality of the course is there. So, we have to very carefully draft the course outcome. It should not be formulated for one unit, which is just Next one. In the course plan, we must include the tutorials other than the routine, traditional, teacher oriented teaching methodology. We have to move towards the student directed learning. We have to include more tutorials for that. In traditional learning, lecture methods, solving examples, interactive lectures, and slowly moving towards student centered. Flipped classrooms, that is, uh, we can uh, make our learning place into Socratic questions, like discussion based learning, role playing, group discussion may be different. Scenario based, role playing may be different. Case based, collaborative learning. Inquiry based, so short survey may be conducted with the students. Problem based in learning and project based in learning. What student centric learning inside of tutorials must be included in our course planning? Knowledge dimension. There are four kinds of knowledge. First one is factual knowledge. We are taking it to be K1 level. Basic knowledge that the students should know in order to understand the basic idea, concept, and process. The knowledge of terminology, knowledge of specific details and elements. Then comes the conceptual knowledge. So it gives the knowledge of classification, knowledge of principles and generalization, knowledge of theories and knowledge. Then procedural knowledge. Knowledge of how to perform the skills, tasks, techniques, and methods. And meta cognitive knowledge. It is awareness on one's own thought, pro thought processes. It gives the strategic knowledge about the cognitive tasks, include, including the contextual and the conditional knowledge, self knowledge. And the cognitive process dimensions are again revolving around the Blue's taxonomy from remember to understand, then to apply, then analyze, then evaluate, and finally to create. Next one. The assessment tools for uh, evaluating our course outcomes may be uh, of two ways, direct attainment and indirect attainment. Direct attainment is possible by way of uh, measuring our, uh, our students' performance in internal tests, quiz, assignments, seminars, projects, model exams, and Indirect attainment, after the completion of the semester, we can conduct the course of this survey for each course. So, five uh, course outcomes we have set means whether you are able to do that, whether you are able to explain, whether you are able to apply like that, the survey questions may be shoot at the students based on their response, the indirect assignment may be calculated. Next one. Guidelines for framing MCQs. So, in outcome-based education, we have to make the students to uh, think in a a uh, clear-cut manner. For that, the multiple choice questions are very much helpful to them. While framing the multiple choice questions, we have to keep in mind the following guidelines. 
construct each item to assess a single return objective. This question is mapped with a single CO. State the stem in simple, clear language. The choices we are giving, that should be simple. Use as much the information in stem rather than options, but avoid irrelevant information. State stem in a positive form. If negatives are to be used, make them bold or in upper case. Do not use all of the above as one of the options. That is the usual mistake committed by the teacher. So in the four choices we are giving, all of the above or none of the above, such things should be avoided. Use none of, none of the above option. Do not use double negatives. Avoid verbal clues that may lead students to select the correct choice. Follow the normal rules for grammar and punctuation. Place the item choices alphabetically or in logical sequence. Keep the length of the options equal. Avoid use of the specific determiners such as always, never, seldom, etc. Next one. The common mistake that we will be committing in question setting are the stem structure requires retracing, unfocused stem, extraneous material in the stem are the options, negatively phrased questions using all the above or as one of the options, only four plausible options and incorrect options standing out, mutually exclusive options. The length of the options not equal. Keep it in mind and avoid such mistakes. Next one. Designing the assessment blueprint or assessment summary. Ensure the questions being asked in the examination are aligned to the objective or outcome. Ensure that there are no questions that are out of syllabus. Make assessment fast to the students. Design the instructional strategy. Ensure that the selected test items provide appropriate emphasis on thinking skills and assessment of index knowledge of the skills. COIs question setting. So I have uh, for sample purpose. While uh, setting the section A question, you have to remember who then this kind of questions may be asked. They are for K1 level, that is creating our memory value. K2 for understanding level, what that question may be asked. When it is asked as how, it is application level. Why means reasoning, that is analyze level. Four choices of questions are given here. Again, from the same uh, four principles of management. Who has contributed the principles of scientific management? Who? Remember that. What is the formal group? Understanding. As a HR manager, how will you select a data entry operator? In the staffing unit, under selection test, they will be learning so many selection tests. From that, they have to find out which is relevant for collecting a data entry. Then, one. Stage one, the deliberation is less in centralized organization. So, here, by relying on the word state, we should not say that it is at the K1 level. State one, deliberation is a concept, centralization is a concept. Here, we are making the students to Think of both the concepts and express their opinion on why delegation is less in centralized organization. So, for getting one mark, they have to analyze two concepts. Okay. Thinking capacity should be developed among the okay. so learners' responsibility. We are talking about ourselves too much. What is the learner's responsibility under OBE? In OBE, the students are responsible for their own learning and progress. They have chosen this Thomas education. They are struggling hard for get a seat in the BCom class or in the YAMCOM class. So they should be responsible for their own learning and progress. Nobody can learn for the learn for the learning. 
It is only the learner himself or herself who can drive himself to learn. That learning is a personal matter. Teachers can only facilitate that learning, define the learning outcomes to be achieved, and assist them to achieve those outcomes. The students have a bigger responsibility to achieve those outcomes. In this way, they will be able to know whether they are learning or not. Next one. The CO attainment calculation. For this, we have to construct the rubrics. So we have to set the target mark. So for the course outcome one at the K2 level, 70% may be set as the target mark. Everybody will be understanding some concept. 70% may be set. And for some keywords, the target may be less. All the students will not understand in the uh, first level itself. So for analyze level, the target should not be fixed too high. So 50 students, 50% of the students will be attaining that target. It is set for that course. It will be easy for us to measure the CO attainment. Next one. CO attainment. We have to set the target for CO attainment also. We have to revise the target as and when required. We have to work constantly for CO attainment also. We have to maintain rapport with the stakeholder and maintain proper data bank of students and alumni so that we can achieve with the progress of our students. How many of them have entered for higher education? How many of them have started their own business? How many of them are, have entered the job market? What they are doing now? That to be tracked. The short recap, we are coming to the end. Curriculum design. Remember, the curriculum should be industry relevant. The first thing we discuss. Then, continuous improvement should be there. The course content should be innovative. The course plan should include the tutorial elements which are innovative. We have to prove our quality while teaching. Assessment planning. We have to think of the success of the students also. In the internal test, what are the keywords I am going to cover? For quiz, what keywords I am going to cover? While giving us the assignment or while giving us a project or while giving the seminar topic, what keywords are to be covered. So that decides the success of the student. Then the attainment and the analysis. This should be uh, done as an automated process. Okay, By using softwares, we have to calculate this attainment. It should be the automated process. Survey and the analysis should be carried out. We have to get the full data about what our students are doing after their graduation. And the continuous monitoring of outcomes will help us to reframe our program outcomes, program educational objectives, vision and mission. Then faculty contribution. It should be measured from the expectation of the stakeholder, that is, what our students are opining about us? What our alumni have the opinion on our quality teaching like that? Then go for self-assessment report that is for the accreditation means when we are going for NAC and all for accreditation means assess yourself where you are, where the students are, where the alumni are. Coming to the end. Thank you. Quality is a journey, not a destination. As commerce teachers, let us make tomorrow's managers as successful ones who are industry relevant, who can uh, face the global competitive digital. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.
it is important to be a person of honor than be a person with wealth to prove these words i would like to invite our resource person for session 3 Dr. C. Muthulakshmi, Head and Assistant Professor of Commerce, Bcom Business Analytics, C. Vengadasamin Naidu College, Autonomous Kovalpati, to hand over the session 3. Good morning to all of you. I'm Dr. C. Mutalakshmi. I'm going to... Active learning is defined as any instructional method that engages the students in the learning process. In short, active learning requires the students to do meaningful learning activities and think about what they are doing. Benefits of active learning. Next slide. The active learning strategy develops the collaborative skills of the students encourages risk taking capabilities it requires students preparation increases engagement improves the critical thinking of the students increases retention in the postgraduate courses makes technically more powerful sparks the creative thinking of the students and it fosters the real problem solving skills of the students let me see the active learning strategies one by one the next slide. The first strategy is line up. Next slide. See the picture. Line up. Previous slide. Uh, line up. 
so see the picture the students uh, make the students stand in line by line the activity under the next slide line up strategy is ask the entire group to line up along one wall of the class and then present an issue tell the class that the right end of the line represents the position yes i agree completely and the left end of the line represents the position no i completely disagree students should mingle and discuss their opinion on the issue eventually finding and taking their appropriate position within the continuum once the students are in place take a few moments to students to discuss why they have chosen the position they have in the various locations in the lineup repeat for a variety of questions for another version of this activity tape a circle in the center of the room students who agree should stand close to the circle and those who disagree should stand further away ask the students who are on the extremes and in the middle to explain why they chose that location next slide the another strategy is post it parade next slide the activity under the post it parade activity is or the students are provided with a question or prompt for which they need to generate ideas solutions etc give each student a few post its and have them write out one idea per post it students then post the post its on the chalkboard or wall depending on the question or prompt it may be useful to have them place the post its in areas to group them by topic question chronology chronologically etc next slide the another strategy next strategy is debates next the debates activity under the debate strategy are as follows divide the class in half either by asking the students to seat themselves in the section representing a particular side of the debate or dividing the students in half by where they already happen to be seated assign each half of the class a position on a topic or issue give the students approximately 15 minutes to prepare an argument for their position after 15 minutes have each side share their position after each side provides their opening argument each side must then prepare to respond to the opposition's argument this part requires members of the groups to carefully listen to and reconstruct the opposition's argument after each side provides their criticisms of the opposition's position each group then has the opportunity to respond to the criticisms give the students approximately 10 minutes for students to prepare their responses to this as well this is debates next strategy is dotmocracy see the picture and then the activity under the dot democracy or as follows next slide the dot democracy is a technique for voting and recognizing the levels of agreement among a group of people for example in a group discussion five potential strategies for dealing with a particular problem might be suggested one way of accessing individual opinions on each of these alternatives in a non threatening fashion is to write all of the options on large sheets of paper and put the sheets of paper on the wall students are then each given a certain number of sticky dots and asked to walk around the room thinking about each of the options and putting one or more dots on the approaches they most strongly agree with at the end of the democracy period all participants can visually across the opinion of the group as a whole alternatively students can use markers to add a check mark or dot as their vote this democracy and uh, next strategy is a snowball strategy next slide the activity under the snowball strategy are as follows present an idea question or issue to the students each student first thinks about the idea for 1 minute with the goal of generating at least three reactions 
or comments or answers two students then come together with their list and try to come up with three things they agree on the pairs of students then join with another pair and try to come up with the three things they agree on repeat for as many iterations as desired eventually bring the class together as a group to hear what the students have decided are the three most important issues questions relevant to the topic discussed this is the snowball strategy then the next strategy is the fish bowl strategy see the picture under this strategy the students are divided into two groups group a and group b group a is the fish bowl group and the group b are observers next slide the activity under fish bowl strategy are as follows for this activity you will need a small group of volunteers to be in the fish bowl to participate in the activity the rest of the class are outside of the fish bowl and observe the activity take place fish bowls are used for dynamic group involvement the most common configuration is an inner ring group a which is the discussion group surrounded by an outer ring group b which is the observation group just as people observe the fish in a fish bowl the outer ring observes the inner ring group a is given an assignment such as a discussion or exercise to perform while b observes after 10 to 30 minutes the groups switch they can either perform the same activity a modified version or a new activity the group observing will either observe the process the content or both depending on the desired outcome after the activity you can have groups give feedback to each other either on a group to group basis individually or in pairs if you feel that the learners are not ready for public feedback ask them to provide feedback to each other in pairs or in writing this is the fish bowl strategy next the strategy is quest question see the picture displayed in the powerpoint this is the quest question the next slide the activity under the quest question strategies are as follows quest question is discussion through the questions only the facilitator starts the quest question by asking a question related to the discussion topic and writing it on the board participants starts the quest question by asking a question related to the discussion topic and writing it on the board participants may only respond or add the question in the form of more questions each question is written down on the board they dis this discussion model is very informal and participants should take turns shouting out questions as they think of them there are three rules only questions are allowed if someone makes a statement everyone else a statement and three two other people must speak before a participant can participate again following quest question the class can then focus on one or more of the key questions raised in greater depth alternatively if the questions are recorded on the board the class can vote on the question that they would like to explore further using the democracy voting with dots this is a quest question strategy next strategy is index card pass next slide index card pass the index card pass uh, strategy the activity under the index card pass strategy give each student an index card ask them to write down one question they have from your reading or a question more specific to your needs students then exchange their cards making at least four passes or more if they get their own card back they can keep it or they can make an extra pass have the students get in groups of 3 to 4 each student should read their index card and as a group pick one index card question they want to address students should then discuss the possible answers to the questions after students have had time to discuss pick a few questions to discuss as a group this is the index card pass strategy the next strategy is think pair and share see the picture next slide under the think pair strategy the students individually think about a particular question scenario or problem next have each student 
pair up to discuss their ideas and answers then bring the students together as a large class for discussion the think pairs share strategy the next strategy is bus groups see the slide and then there is a activities under the bus groups strategy are as follows break the class into small groups each group discusses the topic or question on their own for a few minutes to generate arguments answers or ideas once the time is up have each small group share one idea answer or argument with the class record the ideas on the board this is a bus group strategy the students are divided into several groups the ideas are, will be discussed and they entered in the board this is a bus group strategy then the next strategy is one minute paper or reflections see the slide one minute paper or reflections the activity under one minute paper reflections are as follows provide the students with one question for brief reflection you emphasize that the responses should be concise each student then records and submits their answers as needed follow up on their comments be sure to summarize and respond to any important questions or issues that arise in the students responses the following class example concepts that did not seem clear to the students this one minute paper of reflections next then next strategy is pro con grids pros and cons will be uh, written by the students see the slide the activity under the pro con grid strategy are as follows pick a topic that lends itself to the idea of making list of pros and cons or advantages and disadvantages for some issues break the students up into small groups have the groups come up with at least three points for each side additionally let the students know whether they should be putting their list together in point form or full sentences once the students have had time to complete the activity bring the class back together to share and discuss their points on each side this is the pro con grid strategy and the next strategy is a case study strategy the activity under the case study strategy are as follows provide the students with a real world case for the students to study example a news article account of a decision or procedure video etc alternatively have students find their own case to examine individually or in small groups have students analyze the case using guidelines and a framework provided by you the instructor have the students present their analysis to the class or require the groups to turn in written answers if presenting in class try to facilitate the discussion such that the students connect the case with material in the class after the student analysis has been completed ensure that the group has concretely discussed how the case study illustrates the application of theoretical or background background concepts from the course material this is a case study strategy the next strategy is complete turn taking see the slide the activity under the complete turn taking strategy are as follows each student should be asked to bring a couple of questions to the class these can either be questions to clarify or the issues they can think were left unresolved or ideas positions not yet considered how the entire class arrange themselves in a circle alternatively the students can be in small or medium sized groups one student read a question aloud the student to their left then has one minute of an time to speak and give their thoughts this person signals that they are done speaking by saying okay i am done the next person to the left goes has one minute of time to speak and signals they are do, done by saying okay i am done finally the third student to the left goes the follow, following the same pattern after the three people have had a chance to speak the conversation is opened up to the whole group for two minutes of discussion the next student gets to ask a question and this cycle continues this is the complete turn taking strategy the next strategy is group text reading the students will read the uh, text in group the activity under the group text reading are as follows 
Select a difficult text or passage. Break the large text up into one to two paragraph sections. Break the students up into groups of two to four. Give each group of students a different section of the text or passage. Give the students time from 15 to 20 minutes to read through and discuss their section of the text. If possible, give the students guiding the questions such as what is happening in this section? What's the important takeaway point? What may be the important for me to know later? Bring the class back together. Each group presents their section to the class, starting from the first part of the text. As students present, the instructor should write or draw on the board, correct and add to student responses and provide examples as needed to help this concepts together. This is the group text reading. Next strategy is a peer review strategy. The activities under the peer review strategy are as follows. In this activity, the students provide their peers with the feedback on their papers or lab reports. Have each student bring to class a printed or electronic draft of their assignments. Have students swap papers with one or two other students, depending on the time available. Each student then reads another student's paper and provides them with some form of written feedback on their current drafts. After preparing the written comments, students then chat briefly from five minutes with their partners about their paper in order to provide verbal feedback as well. This is a peer review strategy. Next slide. Respond, react, reply strategy. See the slide, reacting versus responding. The activity under the respond, react, reply strategy are as follows. Break the students up into small groups. Provide the students with a prompt. The prompt can be a targeted question, written passage or text or an argument. Each student then responds to the prompt on their own in writing. After each student has had a chance to write their response, have them read and share their response with the group. Each student then reacts to each of the other group members' responses. Then the student replies to each of the reactions to their own response. The students will react other group members' responses and also their own uh, reactions to their own response. This is the respond, react, reply strategy. The next strategy is a social annotation of text. The strategy uh, activity under the social annotation of text are as follows. Select a yeah, text for the groups to annotate. The students will annotate the text. Many texts can be found online uh, at Project Gutenberg opens a new window or through a simple Google search. Select a platform for performing the social annotation, such as uh, Google Drive, eMargins opens in new window or a classroom saloon opens in new window. These are the link, the uh, text or uh, uh, provided for uh, annotation, the instructors can make use of the uh, text. Have at least one student from each group bring a computer to the class. Ideally, all the students would have access to a computer. In small groups, have students annotate the text. Encourage them to reply to each other's posts as well. This is a social annotation of text strategy. Then the next strategy is to think aloud. Make the students think aloud. The students uh, should think that I predict that I can picture a question I have is this reminds me of this is like I am confused about the big idea here is uh, whatever they think they are going to uh, note their thoughts. This is the think aloud strategy. Uh, the activity under the think aloud strategy are as follows. Choose two to three paragraphs of new text for the students to read. Students work in pairs. Student A gets a text one and student B gets the text too. One student reads a passage of text aloud and while reading, they stop frequently to think aloud. The reader stops after every few sentences and reflects on what they have read. This process is awkward and varied for most. Let the students know this and that is okay. Model this activity very briefly for the students with a sample text. Once student A finishes their text, student B then performs their think aloud. Give students from 15 to 20 minutes to perform this part of the activity. Bring the class back together as a group. Go over each of the texts, then perform a think aloud as a class 
asking the students to contribute what they were thinking about each point finally conclude the class with a meta moment ask the students what they thought of the activity and what they will take away to their next reading this can take the form of a one minute paper this is a think aloud strategy then the next strategy is round table strategy the activity under the round table strategy are as follows have the class move their desk into a circle so that everyone can see each other the discussion facilitator poses a question each person in turn around the circle provides a comment if a student does not wish to comment they may pause repeat for a variety of questions this is a round table strategy these are the strategies uh, for uh, active learning strategies for uh, obe uh, among the uh, all the active learning strategies the strategies can be classified into uh, several uh, three ways for large group individual or small group the large group students uh, means we can use the strategy as a line up post it parade debates dot democracy snowball fish bowl post question index for cost government paper these are the strategies for large group and for uh, individual student means uh, we may use the one minute paper strategy post it parade pro and this and another Uh, useful yeah, the, group students, yeah, the case study is complete turn taking post it reading group text reading peer review respond react reply on this social annotation of text bus groups bus question think aloud round table and debate these are the strategies of group when these strategies are, are used in the classroom itself uh, while implementing the outcome based education the students can enhance their knowledge skills and abilities in a uh, short time thank you ma'am saying thank you is more than good manners it is good spirituality i welcome ms k kartika second become ba to express our gratitude with vote of thanks uh, excuse me organizers uh, this is deepak here can i talk to each one of you present here hello it is a moment of thanking all the participants and the chief guest take part in our one day online national level workshop on implementation of outcome based ed education in commerce education on behalf of our college become business analytics department we extend our thanks to all the faculty members and the experts who have joined us we extremely thank the honorary director of icssr src hyderabad Pro professor v Usha Kiran Madam for accepting our proposal to conduct this workshop and sanctioning the financial assistance assistance to us. We thank our college secretary, Dr. B. Magendran Sir, our principal, Dr. N. R. Shanti Magishwari Madam, and our director Sir, Dr. G. Vengraj Alabadi, for presiding over this function. We extend our gratitude to all the resources persons of the day. Dr. S. T. Selvasundari, Assistant Professor of English, B. Vengraswamy Naidu College, Atanamas, Kovilpatti. Dr. K. J. Sanmista, Assistant Professor of Commerce, the Standard Fireworks, Rajaratnam College for Women, Atanamas, Vagasi. Dr. C. Mukhlakshmi, Head and Assistant Professor of Commerce, Business Analytics, G. Vengraswamy Naidu College, Atanamas, Kovilpatti. We are so grateful to all of you for accepting. accepting over invitation to share your expertise with us we extend our sincere gratitude to all the faculty members who shared this precious time today to participate in this workshop for successfully coordinating this program we would also like to express our gratefulness to dr s sagira banu assistant professor bcom business analytics thank you one and all